What's up, guys? Welcome back to Country Bunkers Trains. Hope you're doing well and having a good week. We have a gigantic new engine set to check out today here in the train room. One that I know some of you have been eagerly anticipating. That is the new to us MTH Premier Seaboard Centipedes. These things are absolutely massive. The biggest engine set here in the train room. I almost feel like we're getting more in the G scale more so than O scale with these things. Here's the big boy next to it. Isn't this thing massive? <laughs> it almost makes the big boy look like a cute little toy, doesn't it? There's two guys we have to blame for this engine set being here in the train room. I gotta be honest, originally I wasn't all that drawn or intrigued by owning a set of centipedes. I know that might sound a bit crazy coming from myself, being someone who likes these big oddball engines, but honestly I really wasn't all that drawn to them. They just didn't speak to me. I didn't have to have a set. I had seen some over the years in person, you know, and I always had that passing thought, oh yeah, those are pretty cool. Maybe one day we'll get one. It wasn't until a couple of months ago, our buddy Zach over at Joker's Trains, he came over for a visit while we were having a little get together here at the house. And with him, he brought his Lionel Vision line, I believe they were, Union Pacific Centipedes. What an absolutely beautiful set. And I finally got to see a set of these roaming around the layouts. And yeah, he got me, hook, line, and sinker. I fell in love. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Zach. Got me out here spending more money that I don't need to. But honestly, I was real infatuated with them, and I got on the hunt for a set of these fairly quickly. And that brings us to the second guy, our buddy Mike, or MotoCraze402018, as you may know him here on YouTube. As mentioned, I got to hunting around for a set of these, and Mike, a few months back, just so happened to post a video here on YouTube, that he was looking to downsize some of his O-scale collection and possibly start picking up some G-scale stuff. In that video was this engine. I could not reach out to Mike fast enough. <laughs> Mike, once again, I cannot thank you enough, my man. I absolutely love them. They've definitely found a good home here in my train room. I hope you're enjoying some of your new purchases that you've been able to get through selling off some of your older equipment. Some quick history on the real centipedes, the DR-12-8-1500-2, which became informally known by the public as the centipede, was built by Baldwin Locomotive Works. This was Baldwin's first attempt at building a diesel locomotive. They were built between December of 1945 to July of 1948. Four railroads put in orders for the centipedes, the Pennsylvania, the Seaboard Airlines, National Railways of Mexico, and the Union Pacific. The first two demonstrator units were originally ordered by Union Pacific. However, the sale was never completed and the units were eventually scrapped. The engines weighed 595,000 pounds and came in, came in at 91 feet and 6 inches long. A total of 54 centipedes were built. 24 went to the Pennsylvania, 14 went to Seaboard, 14 went to the National Railways of Mexico, and the first two demonstrator units that never made it to the Union Pacific. Two more were scheduled to be built for the UP, but were never made. Unfortunately, the centipedes were essentially obsolete even while still in production. Baldwin was unable to compete with other manufacturers at the time, such as EMD. Reliability was a major problem that plagued the centipedes throughout their career, Baldwin was known for manufacturing steam engines years prior, and they tried to build the centipedes in the same manner. This resulted in many issues concerning the wiring, electrical. There would be different electrical connections or connectors between engines for lash-ups and so forth, so they did not coincide together. Routine maintenance was also problematic as no two engines were the same. There was no streamlined process to maintenance or perform maintenance on the engines. Due to the problematic issues that surrounded the centipedes, the Pennsylvania relegated the engines to mostly helper service where needed. Most Pennsylvania and seaboard engines were scrapped by the early 1960s. The National Railways of Mexico held on a little longer with these engines getting scrapped in the mid-60s. Unfortunately, no centipede engine was kept or preserved, another forgotten giant of the railroads. 
Now let's check out this beautiful MTH Premier model of the Centipedes. This set was offered in the 2001 Volume 2 catalog and delivered in August of the same year. She's a bit of an old gal. This set sports metal wheels, axles, gears, and body side grills, die-cast truck sides, pilots, and fuel tanks, remote-controlled protocouplers on the front of each engine, illuminated number boards, marker lights, and cab interiors, directionally controlled headlights, metal chassis, and ABS plastic bodies, pretty standard stuff. It does have two operating smoke units per engine, as well as two precision flywheel equipped motors per engine for a total of four smoke units and four motors for this complete set. This thing will smoke you out of the house and pull the house down at the same time. <laughs> there are engineer and fireman figures in the cabs. Comes equipped with Proto Sound 2 featuring freight yard sound effects. This set measures 46 inches long, almost four feet. And of course, with that, the minimum recommended curve is 072. And obviously, that is a very hard recommendation. It almost doesn't want to fit on my 072 curves. I think this thing has more overhang than the big boy. One thing I'd like to point out on this older set, which is pretty standard and common back in this model's era or time frame, and that is that you cannot run both of these engines independently of each other. The front engine you can run by itself all day long. The problem is you would have to install a coupler back here in order to pull any cars or anything like that. This tail engine has a slave board installed inside. It talks and communicates through this tethered plug right here that connects in right here and communicates with the main board which is here in the front engine. And then the two engines are joined mechanically together with this goofy drawbar. Kind of an odd one. I haven't seen this one before. But yeah, you can't run these independently of each other. In order to operate them properly and pull a train, they do have to be connected. Like I say, this was pretty standard back then. Nowadays, MTH has completely gotten away from installing slave boards. If you want to have two powered units, you got to buy two powered units. They don't really come in a set anymore, it seems. Now, I know what you guys might be thinking or wondering. As mentioned, I picked these engines up a couple months back, and a lot of you knew I purchased them from Mike. A lot of you reached out, were requesting videos on them, and wanted to see them running here on the layout. Well, unfortunately, we did have a problem with this, with this engine set. Now, I have absolutely nothing bad or negative to say about Mike. Mike is one stand-up great guy. Stands behind his product. All, nothing but good things to say about Mike. It just so happened that it had a problem when it came into my hands. It has nothing to do with him. I knew what I was getting into purchasing these engines. They're old P2 5-volt engine, or engine, I guess I should say. So I knew what I was getting into. And Mike sold this set for an, a steal of a price, in my opinion. So again, nothing bad or negative at all to say about Mike. But yeah, they showed up, and the 5-volt board died. <laughs> pretty typical, pretty uh, standard for MTH P2 5 volt systems. But luckily, my boys, Tony and Mike, over at Roundhouse South got me taken care of. They just so happened to have a very precious brand used 5 volt board to replace the one in this one. Mike got the new brand used board installed and we're back up and running. How cool is that? We did stick with another 5 volt board, of course, and that was to keep costs down. Obviously, I don't have a ton of money invested into this set, and I didn't want to sink a bunch of repair money or upgrade money into it. So we stuck with the 5 volt for now. And who knows, it might last my entire lifetime as long as I own the engine. Or in the future, in a couple of years, if I, we have to go back and do an upgrade, a P3 upgrade or a conversion of some sort, we'll do it at that time. But for now, we'll keep the 5 volt system just to keep costs down. And as mentioned, the engine's running beautifully. It runs perfectly. Let's go ahead and take these beauties for a run. You will notice in the following scenes coming up, you'll see the smoke units off and on at times. Being an older gal, the smoke units do have a little bit of a buzz to them, and with all four running, yeah, it gets quite loud. <laughs> Sometimes it even overtakes the sound system itself. But hey, it's all good. It does put on one hell of a smoky show when you do got them all running. Is you ready to go? Okay. 
think that's one hell of a set isn't it 
I may have originally not wanted to pick up a set of centipedes, but I am damn sure happy to have this set now. I like this set so much, I even went out and picked up a seaboard caboose to go along with it. And that's saying something for me. I'm sure you guys know I lack a lot on my cabooses, but I needed to have this one to go with this engine. Before we bring this video to an end, I want to give one last quick shout out to our buddies Zach, Joker's Trains, and Mike, Moto Craze 40 2018. I'll leave links in the description below to both of their channels. Make sure you go check them out. I'm a big fan of both of their channels, and both of them share the same type of vibe or reason as to why I like them. Obviously, of course, they share their fun and experiences, but they share their real-world experiences, both good and bad. And I have nothing but the utmost respect for that. And that's something I try to do here on this channel. Now, obviously, I cannot speak for them, but I do have a feeling we share the same type of connection or the same, same type of fun in the sense that, yeah, we like being perpetuants of this hobby, sharing the fun and putting it out there here on YouTube. But at the same time, we're not afraid to share some constructive criticism and show some, not maybe not the best parts of the hobby, if that makes sense. I know a lot of people shy away from this, might get angry about it, but there's nothing wrong with some constructive criticism. And a lot of people don't like to do it. But like I say, you got nothing but the utmost respect from myself. I enjoy seeing real world life experiences, trials and tribulations, even here in the hobby. I, I just like seeing that, you know, it gives me more of a greater idea of what's going on or what products to maybe buy or stay away from. Regardless of what many might try and tell you, not every train is the most amazing thing in the world. Not every car is the best thing since sliced bread. You know what I mean? <laughs> that engine we looked at today is a perfect example of that. It's a great engine, but we had to do some work to get it up and running again. But yeah, like I say, I really enjoy that personally. I'm done rambling now, I promise. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video on the new to us MTH Premier Seaboard Centipedes. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It would be much appreciated. As always, guys, until next time, my name is Zach, and this is Country Bunkers Trains. Y'all take care. I'll see you the next go-round.